Hello everybody and today is going to be all about my 2021 makeup favorites. This is always one of my favorite videos to watch from other people and so I'm really excited to film my version. It's probably going to be very long so I'm gonna try and keep it short. I tried to cut it down as much as I could in each category but I just had a lot of favorites this year. I'm not gonna include things that were favorites from 2020 so if you're interested in that you can go watch my 2020 favorites but this is gonna be all makeup that I tried this year. And I have kind of a lot considering I feel like I didn't buy as much makeup this year, but I have a lot. Before this gets way too long, let's go ahead and talk about all of my makeup favorites. Um, buckle in, get a snack, because this is going to be very long. Starting off, I don't talk about skincare really on my channel, I keep it pretty basic, but I wanted to share my sunscreen favorite because I always use a sunscreen before I do makeup, and it's the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. I did not like this when I first got it. I'm pretty sure I also like filmed a reel on Instagram and I put this in like the nay section of like my yays or nays. But this is my second model of it. I really like it because it doesn't have the greasy, lotion-y sunscreen feel. It's not like a texture for everybody. It's kind of like a silicone-y texture. But I like it because it's not lotion-y or greasy on the skin. It really does sink in and I just don't like the feeling of like greasy sunscreen that almost feels like I didn't rub it in all the way. So I really like this one and it's my second bottle. So I thought I should mention that here. Just looking at everything, I have so many favorites this year, but I feel like I really found like my holy grail products this year. And I, I mean, I always say I don't plan on buying things, but like a lot of these categories, I don't plan on buying a lot of products in because I already have things that I feel like can't be beat. But for primers, I have two favorites. I've mentioned these in other videos. I just filmed like a favorite cream products for winter. So if you're interested, go watch that and there's going to be overlap. But if you've watched my channel, you will probably already know all these things. So I just want to include them. This is the Say Beauty Glowy Super Gel. This is the shade Star Glow. This is a gel primer. So I really like this one for added hydration. I don't use it every day, but I do use it anytime I have a foundation that's more drying. So like the Fenty one or the Rare Beauty one, I will put this on before because it just makes sure that all of my dry patches are nice and moisturized. It adds a nice hydrated glow to the skin, but because it's a gel, it really does sink into the skin and just makes the skin feel really soft. Like I said in my other video, if you're interested in this, I would go to Sephora if you can and like swatch it on the back of your hand and you can really feel it's like a gel like water moisturizer that really does sink in and actually adds a hydration to the skin. So I like this one for added hydration. And then of course my Auric Glow Lust. I have the shade Selenite, but I am considering getting a second shade in the new year. I think what I'm gonna do is get the second shade once she releases something new because then I can just save on shipping. But this is such a good product. I've been using this all year long. I wanna say I'm like here on it, but I really can't tell. My favorite way of using this is to apply it all over my face and it really cancels out the redness and adds such a beautiful soft focus glow all over the skin. And then usually I will take a little bit of concealer just on my cheeks and maybe a little bit here just to even out the color because I do have some redness, but this is such a good like everything. It's a good primer, it's a good mix-in, it's a good like under eye brightener, it's a good highlighter. I just really love this product. But like I said, the way I basically use it all the time is just all over the face. It is like a thicker sort of product, but I find that it has so much hydration in the skin and it does sink in, but it is like, it's not water thin and it's not just going to disappear, but it's weightless on the skin. It cancels out redness so well and it has a great shade range. So I really love this and I cannot wait to see what new products or it comes out with in 2022. I'm really hoping that there is a new launch soon, although my wallet is not hoping, but such a beautiful formula, beautiful packaging. Love this one all around. I have a lot of foundation favorites and I feel like I've already talked about all of these extensively on my channel. So with all of these reviews, I'm going to try and keep it short, but I always say that and it never is. So first one, I think this was my first foundation that I tried of this year. It's the M Cosmetics Daydream Cushion. 
This one is empty. Well, actually I had one more use out of it and I used it today. I thought it was empty, but I was able to squeeze a little bit more out, but I do have the like replacement sponge for this. This is like my reliable foundation. Like I was thinking about it and if I had to do a makeup look for like a photo shoot or if I had to do it for work or I had something that I just needed a reliable makeup that I knew was good, this is the foundation I would pick because it's not too glowy on the skin. It's just nice and hydrating. It's never going to look dry on my skin, never ever gonna look dry. And it has a really good amount of coverage where it really cancels out the redness on my cheeks. So I really like all of those things about it. I think it's the perfect foundation. And it's, like I said, my reliable foundation because of the coverage, not too dewy, and like it's never gonna look dry, which sometimes with foundations, it just like looks dry on an off day. But when I need something reliable, this will never do that to me. Next, the Fenty Beauty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. This was such a hit release of the year. I absolutely love this one. I'm pretty sure I'm less than halfway gone with this. I was using this all the time. It just looks stunning on the skin. I think using fingers is the best way to apply this, but it just blends right into the skin. It has a little bit less coverage than the M Cosmetics ones, but it does have a decent amount of coverage and just blurs the skin in such a beautiful way. I've talked so much about this, so I'm going to keep it short, but this one can sometimes be a little bit more drying. I wouldn't say it's drying but if my skin isn't super hydrated and i had dry patches it might look a little dry like right here but overall i'm not ever really worried about this this is like my go-to such a good foundation i just was using it literally every day for months and months on end so i did take a little bit of a break for it but i think spring and summertime this is my favorite because it's not glowy at all i think it's like a really satin finish and wow this was such a good release my third and final favorite foundation this one is probably the same ranking as the fenty one but a more hydrating version hold on let me turn my fan off overall i think this one is like not finicky it's one of the least finicky foundations and i think that's just because hydrating foundations i find are less finicky than ones that are more satin finish because i don't have to worry about dryness but it is the Tower 28 Sunny Days Foundation. This one is on like the natural finish with a little bit of glow side. It has a really good amount of coverage. Again, like I said, it looks seamless on the skin. I really can't tell where it stops and ends and isn't drying at all. Just kind of all the foundations are very similar to each other, just different finishes. So this one is the most hydrating of them all. This one is a really good middle ground with hydration, and then this one is more of a satin finish. And so I love them all, but just kind of pick based on those. But these are my favorite foundation. Concealers, there's only one under eye concealer that was my absolute favorite this year. I rediscovered it in the second half of the year. I've had this one before and completely emptied it, and then I repurchased it, but it's the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is so good on the under eyes. You need to use your finger. Oops. Use your finger, just put some on the under eyes, and it is stunning. It does a really good job of canceling out the darkness on my under eyes. It looks super hydrating, so it's never going to cling to any dry patches. I mean, you can just see in the pot. And it sets really nicely, so it lasts all day. And just the best under eye concealer that I've ever used. And I'm so glad I went back to it because... I had bought this when the shade range wasn't like G11, G whatever. It was like fair, light, medium, that kind of shade range. So this isn't a long time favorite of mine and still is. It is also great on the face. It has a really decent amount of coverage, especially for Glossier. You would expect it to not have coverage, but it's a good like medium coverage concealer and I really love this one. And then I wouldn't I don't know if I consider this one a favorite, but I did use it like every day this year. It's the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This one I am wearing on my under eyes today. It's not my favorite under eye concealer because it does crease like a decent bit. And I find the coverage on the Glossier one is better, but I need less. This one looks a, li a little bit more makeup-y, but it doesn't have as much coverage. But I love this one for the face so i always use this one on my cheeks because i do have really red cheeks and i just like to put on a little like a few little dots on my cheeks of this concealer and it does cancel out the redness nicely so this is a staple in my routine i don't think i would repurchase it unless i didn't find a concealer that interested in me more that was not the correct english pronunciation of that but 
This one I just like because it's super simple. Just swipe it on the cheeks. I have the shade 0N in this, by the way. I found that the one darker was way too peach. And this one is more like yellowy neutral. And then in Glossier, I have G11. But just love this one for the cheeks. But I don't think it's... I don't like it on the under eyes, really. Powder, one favorite. You guys already know, the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder is the best thing to ever grace my face. I have a really good dip on it and I think I want to try and hit pan on it in 2022, even though I don't ever want to use it up, but I just, this is the best powder, especially if you have dry skin. It doesn't add any powderiness to your skin, but it cuts the like edge of a shine. It's not going to get rid of like a hydrating glow at all, but it's going to cut the edge of the shine and make it look like I'm wearing it all over my face today. It's just going to make you look healthy it's gonna just make you look so beautiful and it's not going to make your skin dry at all and it's gonna make the skin look extremely soft i also love this one on the under eyes it's just the best powder ever if you have dry skin or you don't like powder you need to buy this because this is the best powder ever and i feel like no matter how much i rave about it nobody talks about this. I've never seen anyone comment that they bought this and loved it. I've never seen anyone on Instagram have this. Like, why isn't everyone talking about this? This is the best powder in existence. Let's move on to bronzer. I am just going to talk about one bronzer, just to be honest. My number one favorite of the year is the Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. I have the shade She is Statuesque. I, I don't know if you can tell. I have a good dip in this one. And then I really flattened out the powder side. I looked at a picture of when this was brand new and I could really tell the difference in the powder side. It's way less defined. And I love this duo. The contour is really light, but it's like very neutral. So I find I can use it as my bronzer and it's not going to add too much to my skin. It's just the perfect amount of bronzer that I want. It's very subtle, so if you're into that look, I would highly recommend it. And then the powder side is perfect for after I set my face or I feel like I kind of lost my bronze. I just go over top of it with that. I love this one in the crease as an eyeshadow too. It's just my favorite bronzer of all time and it's just so good. I will give an honorable mention to the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Light. I use this one a lot over the summer and then I've been pulling it out every now and then lately and i like this one it's not as sheer as the patrick ta cream it has a little bit more pigment behind it while still not being a completely matte cream it does have a little bit of a sheen but it's like more pigmented or more full coverage so i do really like this one it's not too warm it's the perfect like bronze on the skin it blends out really easily and i have no complaints about this so it is an honorable mention and that's all I have to say about bronzers. I think my other favorites are ones from 2020, so. Blushes. <laughs> I have a lot of blushes. Let's start with creams. My number one cream favorite is a very new one, and I was not, like, at all interested in these. But my friend Jessica on Instagram kept talking about these, and I was like, mm, I'm not really interested in them, but I guess I'll pick it up. Because I'm already making an M Cosmetics order, so I guess I'll pick them up. These are the best blushes that I've ever used. They are the N Cosmetics So Soft blushes. I have three shades, two of them I bought, and then one they literally just sent to me, which, first of all, I got PR from M Cosmetics. Can't believe it. But the two I bought are Bitten and Venetian Rose. I've talked about these a lot recently on my channel, but look how gorgeous these shades are. Such unique, beautiful shades, and they work with every single makeup look. Venetian Rose is like my everyday color. It's such a stunning color. And then Bitten is like my perfect winter flush favorite. And then, then the one that they just sent me is what I'm wearing today. It's the shade Lychee. And it's like a really pretty melony color. So love these. The formula is just phenomenal on these. Very, very pigmented. It blends out like a dream and completely sets down. I have really changed my cream blush taste this year. I really like something that is really thin on the skin and sets down really easily and is not hard to work with. And these, oh my gosh, these are the best blushes that I've ever tried. I normally don't even like stick blushes because I just think that ones in a pan are easier to use, but these are just so good and the colors are so nuanced. The formula is just stunning and I just, I love these so much.
And then my other favorite cream blush is from Melt Cosmetics. It's the cream blush light. I'm pretty sure actually, yeah, I did do a mid-year 2021 favorites. So some of these products might be repeats. And anything in that video is probably still a favorite now. It's just not as much of a favorite now that it's the end of the year. But it was a favorite for obviously half the year. Anyways, this is the cream blush light in the shade Polished. I got rid of another shade of this just because I didn't like the shade. But this one is stunning. I used it again recently and a sheer layer is perfect for the winter time. It's really pretty in the summer too. It's like a pinky grapefruit color. The formula on these is the most unique formula that I've ever tried. It is like an oil, dry oil in the pan. It's so thin and weightless when you swatch it. It's unbelievable. And then on the skin, super thin. You cannot feel it at all and it completely sets down. This one is the shimmer shade. So it still does have some shine, but it completely sets down. Such a really unique formula and I really love it. I might pick up another shade of it eventually, but I just have so many cream blushes that I really don't need to. And then I will give an honorable mention to the Phytosurgeon's Skin Spark in the shade Fume. I had another shade of this that I declared just because it was not my type of color. This one is pretty new to me, but I have tried out the formula before. It is super, super pigmented, but it does blend really easily and sets down completely. So kind of similar to the M Cosmetics one, but the M Cosmetics one, I don't know, this one's more like a whipped formula. So it is different, but I do like that it sets down and it's a really pretty everyday shade that it warms up a little bit on my skin, but it's like a neutral pink and it's just stunning and it's a really good price point. Now for my powders, I'm going to mention two. My first one is the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Blush. This one is the shade Faded Clementine. It's a really pretty orangey blush that just looks like a warm neutral color in the summertime and it has a nice glow to it. It has the perfect amount of pigment, blends out really easily and doesn't look powdery on the skin. Just a really nice powder blush formula. They just sent me the shade Venetian Rose. I have no comments on it because I just got it, but I think this one I'm going to like even more than Faded Clementine, but these blushes are a really good formula if you like a glowy blush or you have dry skin. And then my number one powder blush formula and probably my second favorite blush behind the M Cosmetics one is the Pat McGrath powder, what are these called? The Skin Fetish Divine Blush in the shade Divine Rose. I've raved about this so much, but this is perfection in a pan. It is not too pigmented, but it blends out so seamlessly and looks seamless on the skin. You can't see where it stops and ends, but it's just a beautiful wash of color that lasts all day. And this is the one without shimmer, but it's absolutely stunning. And I've talked so much about this. You can't even tell that I've used this, but I've used it so much. And it's the perfect like everyday shade. And I don't think I'll pick up any more colors just because I don't need any more, but Maybe eventually like one of the darker ones for winter would be gorgeous, but this formula, I wasn't going to pick it up, but I actually got this one in PR. For highlight, my cream-ish favorite, it's like a cream powder, is these Phytosurgeon Spectral Shine in the shade Mirror Moonlight. I have grown to like this even more than when I originally tried it. I think because I've gotten more use on it and really gotten some grooves in the pan, it's way easier to pick up the product. So if you find you don't love it when you first get it in, I would just like nick the product a little bit and then use like an e.l.f. stipple brush or the e.l.f. whatever that cream stipple brush is and swirl it in the pan a bunch and then put it on the skin and it's beautiful. I like this one underneath a blush because it does have some color behind it. So I like blush on top, but it adds like a soft focus glow. It almost mattifies a super shine to your skin, but adds soft focus glow that just makes you look super super hydrated i'm sure you've heard about this one a lot from a bunch of different people but it's a really unique formula definitely give it a shot when you first try it because it is not just like foolproof you do have to know how to use it but now that i do it's just so pretty and it's never going to look overdone so i really like this one and then the other one which is my number one favorite highlighter is the makeup by mario soft glow highlighter why are more people not talking about this? This is stunning on the skin. You cannot detect it until you turn your head in the light. I'm not wearing it today, but it's so gorgeous and it's not too overdone, but it's not like the most subtle highlighter ever. You can really build it up or sheer it out. And I don't know how to describe it besides this is like a foolproof highlighter that is the best highlighter that I've ever used. And I like it more than any cream that I've tried. 
so I just really love this one. If you like the look of a really subtle hydrated glow highlighter or you like to build it up to a like more intense but not glittery or stroby highlighter, this is just perfection. I like to describe it as a mix between the Essence Pure Nude highlighter and then the Becca highlighters because it has more shine compared to the Essence one, but it has the naturalness of the Essence one. So I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just perfection. Let's talk about single eyeshadows. This year was a total revelation year for me on single shadows. I am not really into palettes at all. I haven't reached for a palette in a while now, and that's just because I feel prettier in like a one and done shade. I don't like a ton of colors in my eyes, and I find a single shadow just makes it simple. And I also love cream eyeshadows, so single eyeshadows, I think, in 2022 are really going to be what I'm using. I might pick up a palette every now and then, but really they're just not. Like, I don't even use the ones that I have, and I feel like 10 times prettier in a single. So, I have a lot of favorites to share with you. These aren't all the ones, but this is my collection. If you want to see a single eyeshadow favorites video where I talk about all of the ones in my collection, I can do that. But for now, I'll pick my top three. Okay, number one, you guys already know, if you're not new to my channel, you should know this. The Oryx Smoke, bleh, what? The Oryx Smoke Reflex. Wow. This is probably my number one makeup item of the year. This is my number one. So... Number one of all time is the shade Temper. This is my, like I said earlier, this is my foolproof eyeshadow shade. If I have something where I just need to look good and I can't really like worry about it, this is what I go to. This is what I use for my boyfriend's graduation photos. It's what I use when I'm like first day of work, first day of class, like whatever it is, this is the best one. So it's just a really like neutral rose gold color. It's not too pink. So it's not too much of a bam color on the eyes, but it's so beautiful and it's my perfect neutral shade. That's what it looks like. It has a good shine behind it just in the cream. But then on top is a beautiful topper shade. Why can't I open this? Beautiful topper shade that adds a really pretty like scattered glitter look. I swatched these in my favorite cream products for winter. So if you want to see that, check out that video. But this is just the best release of 2021. So beautiful and I like to just take a tiny bit with my fingers it's like a whipped gel formula so it doesn't pick up too much when you first go into it but just a small amount and I blend it on the lid and then take whatever is left and just like swipe it in the crease to blend it out I also like these a lot a lot a lot if you find you don't like you can't use these um the rare beauty eyeshadow brush is so good with these but my second favorite shade is the shade defiance this one is a brown color I think it has like a little bit of purpleness to it not like a purple color but in the undertone and it's really stunning color you can see I have a big dip in both of these and then the topper is a really pretty gold shade this one is softer in the pan so it's easier to pick up more and it gives a really stunning glitter topper to the lid I usually wear it more sheer but you can totally go more impactful with it and then my other favorite of the year is from phytosurgeons actually I don't use these as often but they are really beautiful and formula wise so I have two of the glitter toppers this is fractal freesia and this is orchid overload I'm actually wearing orchid overload today on top of their other shade which is potent petal but just a really pretty soft subtle topper shade not at all like an intense glitter topper so if you like natural makeup you'd like these but this is um orchid overload it's a pinky glitter topper it's a really really thin formula in the pan so as you swipe it you're not gonna it's not like the auric where you're gonna pick up like a small bit of product it's just a really thin almost dry formula but i think it makes it really long wearing and you never get too much of it so that is orchid overload and then i also have fractal freesia which i think overall is my favorite just because it goes with more things it's like that beige glitter topper so it's just a really subtle glitter topper that i am personally really into it lasts all day it doesn't crease at all and i love these and then i have the shade wild wisteria which they said that this was their like least selling shade and I want to know how, because this is the best purple eyeshadow 
that I've ever used. I'll swatch it for you, but it's super thin. So you're never going to pick up too much if you just want to go for a really subtle purple look. You could totally have like that amount and blend it out and almost just, oh, do you see how subtle it can be? And it looks like almost pinky, super subtle. You can also wear this just on the outer corner, but it could be such a beautiful wash of color. It has a little bit of sparkle in it, but I'll usually go on top with like wild wisteria, but the best purple eyeshadow because it's so good for every day. It lasts all day. I'm going to be taking this with me when we go to Minnesota because I am going to a Vikings game and like, duh, that's going to match so well. But such a good like purchase for me this year. And I think that these might be getting discontinued. So if you're interested, not like the whole line, but just the In Bloom collection, which is the toppers, Wild Listeria, and then one other color. So if you're interested in those, I'd pick them up. And then a third favorite is a new one, but it's the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in the shade Chiffon. I have another color in Honey, which is also a favorite, but that is from 2020. But this is what it looks like. Really pretty everyday shimmer. It's like a really sophisticated and beautiful like champagne color. It isn't too glittery on the lids or too reflective or intense, but it does have a good reflect to it. And it's just a stunning shimmer that I have been really enjoying. So those are my favorite eyeshadows. That was actually hard because now I'm like, well, there's, there's like three other things I want to talk about. So I will have to make a video, but those are my favorite single eyeshadows of the year. Namely, the Auric ones are my favorite of all time. So you should definitely go check those out. My eye products, i just going to mention two. First is an eyebrow gel, which is the Kosas Airbrow. This is basically empty. This is the best eyebrow gel that I've ever used. It's a drier formula, so I find that it's never going to look like glossy in my eyebrow. Sometimes I use like a brow gel that just looks really wet. This one is really nice and dry, so you're not gonna go overboard. It's not gonna get all over your skin, and it looks really natural. I love the brush, really nice and small. So if you're looking for a high-end eyebrow product, this is my favorite. I also have the clear one, which has really great holes. I'll usually layer the two. And the mascara, please, if you are looking for a high-end mascara and you like volume and length, this is the best mascara that I've ever tried. And it's so good. It's the Rare Beauty Mascara. I'm not wearing it today. I need to buy a new one, but this is the brush. This is just so good if you like volume and length. My lashes have never looked better. Today I'm wearing the Marc Jacobs Mascara, which used to be my favorite. And every time I wear this mascara, I feel like my lashes look bad. Even though I thought that this used to make my lashes look the best they ever had. This one tops it so much. Tops it a lot. So, Rare Beauty Mascara is so good. And I will a thousand times repurchase it. And it's pretty affordable for a Sephora mascara. I want to say it's like 20 bucks. Okay, eyeshadow palettes I will do quickly. Because I don't really use these anymore. But these are my favorites. My number one favorite is the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde. This one, whenever I do reach for it, I do really enjoy it. I find that there's a good variety of colors in here. And one of these is not glued in, but like I never feel like there's so many. I'm going to put this down. <laughs> I never feel like there's so many repeats of a shade. Sometimes I feel like they're all very similar, but this one, every single shade is very distinct and like has its own place in the palette. And because the colors are light, I find I always enjoy the look I get out of it. Um, I really like these two shades right here, but my look is never intense or overbearing when I use this, so I do really enjoy it. It's nice and colorful, but it has my browns and my pinks, which is just what I want on an everyday basis. It's also been on, like, massive sales lately. Like, I think you can get it for, like, 30 bucks from Sephora recently, so it's always been on a really good sale. I think I bought that one, like, half off or something. And then the other two that I will mention, just very briefly, they're not like number one favorites, but I think if I used eyeshadow palettes more, they would be. First is the Patrick Ta one. I don't think this is like the best palette ever, but I do like it just because you have all of the matte browns that you would want, and then the shimmers are like glittery toppers. They are more intense compared to the glitter toppers that I, like the shimmers that I go for now, but I do really like the tones in here. I really like the peachy color, and the creams in here are also really good. So if I want to go for a neutral palette, this one is really good. I just usually prefer my neutral single eyeshadows. And then the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Eye Filter Palette in the shade Star Aura. I need to use this one more, but this one is so good because it's never going to look too much on my eyelids. It is like a satiny shimmer. 
and it's just really pretty on the eyes. This is what I wear to class when I don't know what to do. I love this pink shade and it just looks really beautiful on the eyelids and I find it makes it look like a very sophisticated eye look and you also have this like topper shade if you want to add a little bit of something but it's just a really sophisticated palette and I really enjoy this one. Lip products. I obviously still like the Tower 28 glosses but those are from last year but a new discovery, I think I tried these in 2021, is the M Cosmetics Lip Cushions. This one I got in PR, it's the shade Angel, but I literally just got it and I've had the shades Magic Hour and Venetian Rose for a long time, but one is in my purse and one is in the car. So just have Angel to show you. It's actually what I'm wearing today. These are pretty pigmented. You can sheer them out, but if you don't like a pigmented lip product or you are my skin tone, I would definitely stick to the lighter tones like Magic Hour or Venetian Rose, but these are so cushiony and hydrating on the lips. They're not too glossy, but they are super hydrating and a really unique lip formula. They're also fragrance free, but I love the way these feel on the lips. The only thing I will say is that the shade Venetian Rose, I feel like has like small glitter particles in it and it's not as sheer of a lip product, which I think is because it's for like deeper skin tones, but Magic Hour and Angel, I feel like have a little bit of translucency behind them and Venetian Rose I just think is more opaque with a little bit of glitter in it and I find sometimes when my lips are dry I don't love the way that that one looks and then the glossy ultra lip I also love but I haven't been wearing it lately because my favorite shade which is Villa I think is in my backpack and I, I just never think to look in there so I need to dig all these lip products out but this one is the shade Trench these are really good they are less pigmented than the M Cosmetics ones and less of like a thick product is a really thin like hydrating lip product and I really like these ones and then if I had to choose a lipstick I would choose the Bite Beauty Power Move Soft Matte Lipstick in the shade Sesame this is a pinky nude color it's a little bit deeper than most like nudes because I like deeper colors but I don't love this one all the time because it is like a soft matte I don't think it's drying but it's obviously not like a hydrating um like balm type of thing so it's just gonna feel not as hydrating as what it could be but this one is really nice if i just need something to last me all day and it's a really nice everyday color for me so i do really like that one and i think that is everything that i have to talk about i hope i did good reviews and quick reviews on all of these but i feel like i have talked about all of these products endlessly on my channel but maybe you're new here or maybe you just need to have them all consolidated in one place because i definitely understand that but I hope this was helpful or entertaining in some way. I definitely enjoy filming these and I enjoy looking back on like my 2020 favorites and seeing how much things have changed. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have a question about like any products that I didn't include in this video that you thought that I really enjoyed or you know that I own, you can feel free to leave that in the comments down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.